Think about fellow women around you, your friends, family members, colleagues. How many of them are under 50 and have long hair below their shoulders? Now think about the women around you that are over the age of 50. How many of them have long hair? For a lot of you, I would assume that the number has dropped quite a bit between your first and second answers. Now, why do you think that is? Why is it that we as women decide to opt for shorter hairstyles as we age? There's actually lots of answers to this question that you can find online, and a lot of them do make very valid points, but no one really talks about the proportional changes of our faces as we age and how these changes can be a potential reason for why women choose to get rid of their long locks. So today I'm going to explain what age and time does to our faces and how these changes impact the hairstyles that we choose. Even if you're young, if you've ever been told that you look older than your age, what I'm about to explain today will probably help you understand why. I told you nobody really talks about this and you know I'm not about giving you some stereo typical tips that you can find elsewhere, so stay tuned if you want to learn more. So like I said, if you Google the question, why do older women have short hair? There's actually lots of helpful information you can find about hormonal changes that our bodies go through that also have an effect on the overall health of our hair. And while I think that being aware of these changes in our hormone levels is very crucial, it doesn't really provide a clear answer that explains the visual changes to our appearance that might make us more suitable for shorter hair as we age. And there's actually a really simple explanation for this, which is gravity. As we age, the gravity will pull the face down and that's just inevitable. And this effect is very obvious in our skin, right? With age, our skin also loses collagen and elasticity, so the combined effects of the gravity and the lack of elasticity in our skin is what makes it sag over time. But this also happens to our facial features like the tip of your nose and the lips. And as these features are pulled down by gravity, our eyes will recognize the face as being longer. If you think about a baby's face, face, as a baby grows into a child and then into an adult, the face grows longer. So inherently, we recognize longer faces as being more mature, which is why people that look younger than their actual age will almost always have a face that's shorter than average. And if you've always been told that you look older than your actual age, like me, there's a good chance that the length of your face is longer than the average. But it's also not just about the actual length of your face. Our eyes visually recognize the length of the face by looking at the position of the facial features. So that's your eyebrows, eyes, nose, and mouth. And I've actually explained this concept in my tips for prominent noses video that when the middle third of your face is the longest section in your horizontal proportions, your face is going to appear longer than faces that have a long top third or a long lower third. And these three faces are a really good visualization of how, despite all these faces being of equal length, the face with the long middle third appears the longest. Like I said, our eyes recognize the length of the face by looking at where the facial features are located. So the distance between the eyebrows and the mouth is what visually dictates the length of our faces. And as the length of your middle third increases, the distance between your brows and your lips naturally increases as well, which is exactly why if you have a long top third, your face is not going to appear as long because your facial features are crammed into a smaller section within your face and your features are not as far apart from each other as a face with a long middle third. This is why the length of your philtrum also matters. The longer your philtrum, the lower the position of your lips and the longer the distance between the eyebrows and the lips become. So the effect of gravity is that by your features like your lips and the tip of your nose being pulled down, the more our gaze tends to be dragged downwards and the more length is added to your face visually which adds maturity to the face. Now long hair also has a tendency to drag our gaze downwards as well. Especially if you have long straight hair, our eyes will follow the direction of the hair downwards. So if you already have elements in your face that draw the emphasis down, long hair is gonna amplify that effect even more. That's why a lot of women as we age might feel like we're better suited for shorter hair. On top of reasons like hormonal changes and hair loss, short hair creates a visual break that stops the gaze from being dragged downwards further, so the visual effect of the emphasis 
this being dragged down and the face being lengthened more is gonna be mitigated with a shorter hairstyle. It's also why you'll see a lot of women opt for really short haircuts like a pixie cut. A pixie cut removes the hair completely from your lower facial outline, which also removes the contrast that's created between your hair and your skin. So naturally, our eyes are drawn upwards where there is still contrast between the hair and the skin. And because the contrast is removed around the lower face, features like a long nose tip or a long philtrum will naturally draw less attention. If we look at all these celebrities that look great with pixie cuts, they all have the common element of a long philtrum. Not to say that you can only look good in a pixie if you have a long philtrum, but if you think about why certain people look significantly better with a short haircut like a pixie, a very common reason is that these faces already have elements like a long philtrum that drag the emphasis downwards. And because long hair acts as another factor that drags the emphasis down even further, when that factor is eliminated by a shorter hairstyle, it gives the face a fresher look. This is actually something that I've brought up in one of my very first videos explaining why Halle Berry looks so great with a pixie cut. Not only does Halle have a long feltrum, but she also has a long top third. And a pixie cut often covers the top of the forehead and the hairline, so a pixie is a really perfect style for Halle that can help with drawing the emphasis upwards and away from her feltrum while also covering a part of her forehead and her hairline, which makes her top third appear more proportionate. Even amongst the different styles of pixies, if we compare these two styles, the style that covers the forehead slightly definitely brings more proportional balance to Halle's face. Another thing that I've noticed with Halle Berry is that she rarely keeps a straight face in photos. All celebrities kind of have their own signature pose or facial expression when they're in front of a camera, and some of them smile while some of them don't. But Halle always keeps a smile in photos. And when you smile, your lips are naturally pushed up and the philtrum appears shorter. It was actually really hard for me to find any photos of Hallie with a straight face when she knows she's being photographed. So all of the photos that I have of Hallie with a straight face are screenshots from when she's playing a character. With celebrities, they just know what poses or facial expressions work for them because they're in the spotlight all the time. So maybe it's intentional that Hallie always keeps at least a subtle smile in her photos. We don't know for sure, but I just thought it was a really interesting observation. So now you know, at least from a visual perspective, why older women might opt for shorter hair. So then, amongst the shorter hairstyles, how do we decide between a bob and a pixie cut? The biggest difference between these two styles is that one creates a visual break, while the other draws the emphasis upwards. With a bob, it's the short length of the hair that creates the visual break and prevents the emphasis from being dragged down further. So technically, the shorter the hair is, the more effective the visual break would be at shortening the overall length of the face. Also, with a style like a blunt bob, the hair itself can add width to the face that reduces the facial width to length ratio, which is another reason why a bob is effective at visually shortening the face. But that would kind of depend on the style as well. If you're using a lot of layers, for example, then the layers reduce the overall volume of the hair, so it wouldn't be as effective at adding width to the face. On the other hand, a pixie cut, like I explained, removes the contrast around your lower face and it draws the emphasis upwards. But the downside of a pixie is that this length of a style is similar to a men's haircut in the more traditional sense, and it naturally does bring out a more boyish image in your look. The shorter the hair is, the more our eyes will focus on the facial features themselves. In my last video about visual weight, I briefly mentioned that a shorter hairstyle is generally more suitable for faces that have higher visual weight in their features, and this is the exact reason why. There's a natural tendency for more emphasis to be placed on your facial features themselves when the hair is shorter. So if your features have high visual weight and your face is the type that's more suitable for accentuating the individual features rather than highlighting the overall harmony, then styles that bring more emphasis to your features are obviously good choices for you. If you don't know what I'm referring to as faces that need to accentuate their features versus faces that need to accentuate the harmony, I explain all about that in my visual weight video, so you should check it out next. But the reason why I said this is only a general rule of thumb is because the right length of your hair can also depend on the overall length of the face like we talked about, or the length of your neck could also have an effect, 
or it could be the yin and yang balance of your face, etc. So whether a bob or a pixie cut, both styles technically bring more emphasis to your facial features, which means that if you have a lot of yin elements in your face, those elements are going to be accentuated more with a shorter hairstyle. My face is actually a really good example of that. Proportions wise, I have a slightly long face and a bob is a very suitable style for the length of my face. And I actually get lots of compliments about my hair whenever I chop it off really short. But this is how my husband described it. He says that I look more handsome when I have shorter hair. And that's because the yin elements of my face are naturally highlighted more when I have shorter hair. I think it's also why I get more compliments from other women when I have short hair versus men. Guys just like long hair in general because long hair just makes you appear more feminine. But the reason why I'm specifically saying that the pixie brings out a more boyish image in your look is because with a bob there's more styling options, especially if it's a blunt bob that's not heavily layered. Even just changing where you part is more doable with a bob than a pixie, right? So with a bob, there's just more you can do with your hair, whereas with a pixie, there's generally less styling options. So essentially, how you should decide between a bob and a pixie is if your main goal is to just shorten the overall length of the face or shorten the middle third, then a bob is a great style for that. On the other hand, if you have any elements in your lower third, like an especially long philtrum or a very long chin, for example, a pixie cut is going to be more effective at drawing a stronger emphasis in an upward direction. And because of the short length of the hair, a pixie makes it easier to add volume to your roots as well, which is even more helpful in drawing the emphasis up. But a bob does provide you with a little more options in terms of styling, so it is a bit easier to add more femininity to the look. Whereas with the pixie, you're quite limited to how you can style your hair. And a pixie does remove the hair entirely all around your facial outline, so there is no hiding behind the hair, so to speak. But with both styles, you can also use makeup as a way to add more fun and glamour to the look. So which style you should choose is highly dependent on your own preference and priorities, as well as your overall style and your comfort level with makeup. I also want to say that today's topic was related to age. So I've described these features as elements that make you appear more mature. But I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea that a long face or a long nose or philtrum are just con inclusively bad features because they're not. These are also features that add a lot of elegance, grace, and a very serene and trustworthy impression in a person's overall look. Faces that have these features, like me, because I have a long face and I also have a long philtrum as well, faces like ours have this calm and grounded energy about us. And that's our own unique vibe and beauty that other people don't have. So just because I have these features, it doesn't make me any less beautiful than someone that has the opposite features from me. Oftentimes for people that have youthful faces, their concerns are that they're not taken as seriously or they want to appear more mature because it's more womanly, etc. So what I'm trying to say is that we're all just different faces at the end of the day and we can't have it all. But our features are what makes us us, so please don't take this video as an opportunity to be harsher on yourself about your looks because it's the uniqueness of our own vibe that makes us who we are. I'll see you in my next video and until then, stay unique and stay gorgeous. Thank you.